I do blame myself that I, I broke up my relationship. It seems to be so painful, you know? I can't let it go and I can't move forward. Yeah, we were talking about that, how um, when I first read this part in the relationships part of the manual, where Jesus says two people join together in a very fairly intense teaching learning situation and then appear to separate. Uh, and then he said, and each one learned the most that they could. And all relationships, the teaching learning in all relationships is maximal. In other words, we're, we're together and each one has learned the most they can learn. Now, the heartache, the pain comes in, is you use the word if. if. If only, could I have done more? Could I have done something different? It's, it's like the heartbreak of all of our, our love stories, of all of our stories of unrequited love or breakups. You know, it's, it's part of the drama. And what I learned from working with A Course in Miracles is that this whole time-space cosmos and, and our relationships and everything about it is is what I would call hypotheticals. We are so afraid of the present moment. We're so afraid of love. I mean, true, deep, loving intimacy, that we make up all these hypothetical scenarios and we torture our mind with hypotheticals. And it can be around university, it can be around education, it can be around relationships, it can be around children, it can be around parents. There's a lot of guilt. It's a very intense amount of guilt. And that's been our journey, is we've gone deeper and deeper into this journey of discovery, into starting to see that if something's meant to happen, there's nothing that can prevent it from happening. <laughs> and if something's not meant to happen, there's nothing that can make it happen. Hypotheticals always try to throw in that option, if only things could be different. So the whole, to me, the whole journey of, to peace of mind is starting to realize that nothing can be any different than it is. I've had to let go of career, I've let go of my conceptions of relationship, I've let go of pursuits, I've let go of valuing things of the world. I would rather be happy, I would rather be peaceful than be tormented. And I've found that, you know, the Bible says that all things be exactly as they are, uh, or the Course says that, it says all things work together for good for those that love the Lord. To me, that's, you're, you're just right on the cusp of all the torture that you're going through is this cry for love. Just a cry to, to find this peace of mind. It's a spiritual cry. And that's why you're at Fintorn, I, I would say. That's, you, the cry is so strong that that's, that's what it's all about right now. And it's there, that's what I'm just saying to you. It's really there. I did that too, I tortured myself over so many things and then I came into a realization that I, I, I can't change the world. I mean, uh, the Course even says the script is written, so people worry about predestination and everything. That's more of a linear kind of thing, but what it's saying is basically just accept all things as they are right now and that is the answer. That you will find peace and contentment. Yeah, but aren't you going to then listen to the inner voice. You accept everything, but you, you listen to your inner voice. Yeah. And th that inner voice will be judgmental as long as you believe in judgment. Yeah. The Course says the Holy Spirit uses what the ego made. So as long as there's this thing called judgment, the Holy Spirit will use the judgment to take you out, to unwind your mind yeah. from the world. So it's so practical. And, and that's another thing. I, I will just tune it in. I, we still have to have judgments to go on a tour like this 10 country tour and then after we leave here in Europe we go down to South Africa and go all over South Africa. Those things are, are guidances that came into us. Would you say that as you listen to your inner voice, eventually you dump your ego mind and all your thoughts and ideas are coming from this source, the yes. beloved. Yes. Yeah. That's it. You're just giving the whole formula to awakening right there. That's as simple as that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And recognizing the ego voice, you know, recognizing the, the if only voice, that is, is the recognition of that and the letting go of that, 
leaves the space for the in a voice, capital I, you know, to be heard. But I, I love that line in the course about relationships. It says, like, if this relationship, you appear to separate, that means the teaching learning within that context of being together is maximized. And somewhere in your heart, you know it. You know, you knew it before it came to an end in those two. But it doesn't mean that the healing stops, and it doesn't mean that the love stops. It's actually daring to stay with the love and not turn away and, and still allowing whatever healing comes up into awareness to come up. But the, the ego grabs hold of that and says, oh, but what if? And it just takes the healing in the moment and actually takes the mind away from the healing and the release and the forgiveness <coughs> and distracts it back into a defense again of not accepting what is. And the collaboration, it's good that you're asking this because we're on this tour and there's, uh, how many of us? Four, five, five, five of oh, us. Oh, plus Andy, six, four yeah. others are in support. Yeah, there's a group of us going here through Europe and out of the whole group of us, Kirsten and her ex-husband are on the tour together. Actually, he's over, he's on his way to tomorrow. Dublin, to, and in Finland. To Finland tomorrow, and you're on your way to Sweden tomorrow. But you were just with him. And so you see how this gives a whole new uh, twist to relationships, because when you're serving in purpose, you, aren't, you are no longer married, but you are in, joined in connection and purpose very strongly. Uh, probably, you probably would say stronger now than when you were married, even. So how different that is. So she's speaking from the experience, because I do know what you're bringing up. I, I remember when you would talk to me a lot about that, where you were tortured. Yeah. She was tortured around the, the, the relationship, should it end, and then when it did end, there was still a few niggling little doubt thoughts, could it could it not have ended? And you know, you see that that's the temptation of the world to wish that things could be different than they are, or even hope that they could be different. It's very, very tantalizing. And and so you came once you came through that, then the love was stronger yeah, than ever. Yeah, stronger than ever. And but yeah, I think especially when relationships have such a deep purpose, you know, and you open up even deeper together, and it's part of a pathway to God. And so part of the mind is saying, how could this come to an end? And we still love each other. It doesn't make sense why it should come to an end. But again, it's just what is, when it's maximized, it's maximized. And just somewhere deep inside, there's just, you just have to come into that, that trust or that acceptance of it. And that, like a true relationship, that was the prayer of my heart before launching on the spiritual journey. It's like, I want to know a love that can't come to an end. And, and so this is it. Like this is what we're actually experiencing with these relationships, is that the love is what's true. The love is what brought us together. And the love is, is just deepening and staying in awareness. And then everything else that comes up for healing and the voice that would have us turn away or say something's actually ended. Like, those are just the thoughts being healed. If you can come to that beautiful space of not defining and just staying with what's given, the guidance the given in the moment, that's everything. And, in fact, uh, I ended up starting the first Course of Miracles monastery on the planet. And one time, uh, a few years ago, I was giving a talk at this Course of Miracles monastery, and what came through from the Spirit was, Okay, here's what I want you to be aware of for your relationships now. So the whole community was listening, as, as I was as well, as it came through. And it was um, undefined, guided collaborations. It was starting to think of relationships as undefined, guided collaborations. And I thought, that's my life. Mm -hmm. I've been collaborating with all these people, hundreds of people, thousands of people, for a quarter of a century, feeling the total commitment with all of them, coming together, rejoicing with them, and then, then our collaborations with the constellations would come together, just like when you have a band. Look at the Beatles, it was, wasn't that great? The Fab Four, didn't we all enjoy that? 
Well, can we appreciate that? And then when they go, there were always those that got to get the Beatles back together. Almost, then they had a, turned it into a political issue. It's like, leave the guys alone, come on. John's gone off with Yoko, let, it, let him go. And George with Linda, let, let it be, let it be. Listen to the songs, apply the songs. Don't keep judging these guys. Why do we have to have four together? Can't we just enjoy that, say that was a great collaboration? I mean, when George passed away, they did all, the, the ones that were left came together and wow, they gave a, quite a show, but that was just another collaboration in the moment. And so, I'm not into dissecting and defining relationships. Uh, one time I was invited to Argentina and my friend, her husband of 32 years had, had had to said he wanted to, to split up and and he had another lover and all this and this and she said don't even come down it's the family's just a mess and there's so much anger and everything David you don't even want to come I said I've already bought my ticket I'm I'm coming <laughs> so I I come down there and when I got to the airport her and this man who had been her husband uh, for all these years they both greeted me at the airport and I gave them both big hugs. And I went with the family, and the, the family was so angry at this man. And I was like, can we not honor decisions? If someone ch chooses to, to leave an arrangement and go, can we honor that? Is there some kind of law written that we have to blame people when they decide to move on? So, that was, there was so much healing that went on there, because I couldn't see a problem. I was like in this angry <laughs> hornet's nest, and I'm just like, What's the problem? I'm trying to hug everybody and there's no, 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 there's no need for that. And they were all, let up all their emotions with me, but I was just saying, no, we don't really have a problem going on. We have to honor these decisions. Everyone's doing the best that they can, based on what they believe in. Once we start to figure that out, then we, we take away the blame. They're just acting out their unconscious beliefs, so why should we be the judge, the great God, that tells them that they're wrong, you know? Can't we celebrate with them? Mm. You're leaving, okay! Instead of mourning, we, could, we should say, okay, can I help you? Can I help you pack? Is there anything I can do, you know? That's the attitude we should have when somebody says they want to leave. I, they say, I want to divorce you. Okay, how can I assist in the matter? <laughs> Imagine how much fun you would have if you were just in assistance mode, you know? Just showing up in assistance. And, and instead of like, oh, we've got to see a counselor. <laughs> you know, we have to see a counselor to help us. No, it's not broken. It's just we have to honor the decisions. Yeah. So it's beautiful. I love that. It, it, to the extent that you cannot define relationships, you really have a lot of fun. They're just fun collaborations. You know? Like when we were kids, you know, we just played. It wasn't a big deal, you know. Who's with who? We weren't asking who's with who at three, four years old. Maybe some of us <laughs> programmed, but most of us were not because we weren't defining. Yeah, it, was a, it was a playmate. It's very gracious. It's very graceful. You know, it's like when the, our goal is awakening, that's the purpose. And then if a relationship comes and it's brought to you in support of that purpose, it's like, oh, there's such a gratitude to the spirit for bringing it, you know, for the one who's been brought. There's a devotion and an integrity with that. And then when it's maximized or it's time that it's to go, there's just still can be. Of course, the healing is there if there's still sadness or attachment or other emotions or beliefs being flushed up for healing. But yeah, that same attitude of gratitude really can be there through the whole thing. And it's it's only if we really believe that we own it, that we made it happen and we own it and we've defined it, you know, in some way, then there's just more of a grip on it and it just seems like more, more healing or more resistance is there around it. Yeah, that's how, I, yeah, that's the experience now. It's just very given in the moment. Mm -hmm.